<laughs> oh, you can watch it on your phone. Put your phone on the line. Look at me doing it. I'm going to check for that shit. Don't try to get on new friends to do the same, cause I'll get a me one hot. Blast your ass on you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I can't stand you. Hmm. Wait a minute, you didn't put a uh, 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 a Willie on my thing. I don't know what to call You got to hit no thanks. There you go. Uh, okay. And just um, turn it all the way down so you don't hear that. Uh, that so works. you won't get that feedback. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> now we can see who all of Tell you why you laugh when I said I, I, I actually last week. <laughs> it's okay, Instagram we live. Twitter. Is we live? <laughs> <laughs> all yes, of we are live. Hey, everybody. What's up, Primetime Squad? Everybody check in. Who in the chat? Who in the chat? Who in the chat? Who in the chat? <laughs> Who in the prime time chat? Now make sure you guys click the like button when you stroll on in now. Click the like button. Please share this live because we is going to be discussing. We about to have a church meeting up in here. <laughs> church. Good, old church, good old church meeting. But it ain't going to be like no four hours like they do in church, you know. Y'all ain't got to pass the offering plate if you don't want to. <laughs> but everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight. We're going to be discussing the topic. Let me make sure I put the... Uh, yes, I did put the um, title in there. The topic that we're going to be discussing tonight. Now, it is in reference to a particular pastor that has been in the news lately whose name is John Gray and his wife, Aventer. But the main topic of discussion here tonight is going to be, should we believe that pastors should be faithful to their wife? Should we hold pastors to a higher regard than just regular Men, regular, everyday people. Is that a good term I say, for it? <laughs> once you say I do, pastor or not, I believe that that's a whole nother level for both you, male or female. And a lot of us that haven't ever did the I do thing don't actually understand it but we all and I and I speak for my own so we all do want that and for somebody to cheat or however it goes whether you the one they cheating with or you the one get cheated on once you get married or even just in a regular relationship it hurts all the same to me mm-hmm. and whether you the man of the cloth or just, you know, an everyday man. Yeah, for average Joe. But yeah. one thing I say is, you know, we, 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 we will, it's cute sometimes to anybody. and But then when it happens to you, you know how I feel. So regardless if you make it all the way to the altar or if you get make preparations, it still hurts. And even a pastor or not, or a pastor wife, or however, or a pastor's husband. Mm-hmm. You'll, once it, when it happens, it happens. But they always ask, can relationships come back from that? Can they? Can they, re- yeah, can they, can they survive? That's the thing. And also, not only that, but when it comes to, like, somebody of the cloth, who cheated on their spouse, um, husband or wife, whichever one it might be. Um, 
should they always be allowed to just say I'm sorry like like the main thing that they're talking about with this John Gray he's been all over social media um, I've been watching videos on him for the last few weeks including this morning and the main thing they were saying about him because of the allegations that he cheated with his wife and he also admittedly confessed to doing some things that he shouldn't have been doing you know he confessed it in front of his congregation but he didn't go into details and a lot of people is like you know what if you're going to make confessions to your church or if you're going to stand on the pulpit um don't beat around the bush with it if you want people to totally forgive you and you want people to um think that you're really sincere and apologetic then it should have been more like in his case oh you know somebody um was, was in my circle and they shouldn't have been in my circle and therefore they was in my circle and my wife found out and she got upset at both of us and i was sleeping on the couch and now here we are in front of you guys it's like you know it's like and then on top of that, like, how many times should they be allowed to make mistakes? We're talking about people to cloth. Or does it matter to some people if your pastor cheated on his wife? Um, would you still be a faithful member? Would you leave the church? Would you accept his apology and just move forward? Or would you hold him to a higher standard and say, this isn't acceptable, you need to step down? So that's what I want to hear from you guys. And the phone lines are open. So if you want to call in, just comment in the chat that you want to call in, and we can talk about it. My thing is about any of it. Okay. I've heard that, like, not just pastors or anybody in churches where certain people can go out and they can do things, worldly things or whatever, have baby out, babies out of wedlock, shack up with a man or woman but when they ready to come back or even not when they ready to come back they probably haven't even left the church but <laughs> when they feel they finna be out it all they gotta do is apologize How some people you? everybody can't apologize but some people think? can <laughs> no that's the truth the truth that's is what the they truth. do <laughs> and me i haven't been that many churches or whatever, and I've been married to one church, but I have heard a lot of times where people say they don't go to church because they did this and they did that, or whatever. They might have went out and started back drinking or whatever, doing what they call worldly things, drinking, partying, shacking up, or whatever, but then also so-and-so that's in the church every, you know, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever services is, they can come back to church, and I, I've seen it with women. They come back to church. They're not married, but they're pregnant. Oh. You know, so that's just, that's like cheating, too, to me. And the reason why I say it is like cheating, because it is, to me, what, how I say it is, re, you, you cheat even if you, not just because Sam sex, Sam. There it is. Okay, so let me ask you this. And you guys, remember, you can call in. If you want to call in, just hit me up in the chat and say, I want to call in. The phone number is right there, and we'll talk to you. Um, Do you feel like, okay, now, a lot of people, a lot of people have children out of wedlock, not married, shacking up, whatnot, and they sin. Now, there are some churches who will put you out. Some people might not believe it. But there are some churches that will put you out if you're pregnant and you're not married. Then there's some churches who will let you back in the church um, and with open arms. So is that how you feel it should be with a pastor as well? Should they be just welcome back into the church if they have babies on the side, if they um cheating on their wife over and over again or, you know, things like that. And then coming in front of the congregation Oh, I have fell short from the glory of God. You know, use that all have sin, you know, and just still be in the pulpit. 
that's what we want to know. You know, what you, what do you think about that in matters of like John Gray? Like he admitted that he has some discretions. Um, and then turns around and buys his wife, you know, a two hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini, uh, and it's like all is well. So, do y'all feel like preachers should be held to a high regard? And if they cheat on their spouses, they should be removed from, you know, the pulpit. Or do you think they should just ask for forgiveness? Stay on the pulpit and just keep on preaching as in, you know, nothing happened. Whoa. Hey, Miss Hogg, how you doing? Hey, hey, Miss Hogg. My whole thing is. Oh, Miss Hogg, one, one second, Sammy D. I'm sorry. What, uh, Miss Hogg, as far as the mistress of John Gray, there's that there's accusations that the mistress, um, the one who uh, has like the tape recordings of their conversations, the one that he allegedly uh, beg to delete all her text messages and all her voicemails and emails and all that. She is not the one. There's alleged that there's another mistress who actually had a baby by him whose middle name is Gray. Hmm. But her father called into Larry Reed live show and said it's not true. So, you know, some people believe that it is true though, but no, that mistress that, um, that he was speaking about allegedly when he admitted to some discretions, that's not the only one, allegedly. <laughs> and see, that's how I feel. But some people is like, oh, you shouldn't stop going to church because they cheated because we're all human. And I'm like, I'm not going to stop going to church, but I still feel like pastors who do stuff like that, they need to sit down somewhere at least for a period of time. Instead of just going back up on the pulpit trying to preach us out of our sins the very next day. That's how I feel. Now, go ahead, Sam. Okay, with me, <laughs> with me on that, I'm thinking that if a pastor cheated, male or female, okay, you cheated, and now that you out it and, and people know about it or whatever, my whole thing is, is a lot of people come to you because they need to hear the word and they trying to get themselves together to be a be a better person, but here you are, then done cheating, and cheating ain't just sex. Cheating could be accepting phone calls, text messaging, sexting, or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. Um, going to lunch. Yep, dinner dates. Yep, accepting gifts, any of that. Okay, but then you got these people. They broken. They come to you because they believe in what believe in what you. Speaking of it, it, yep, thank you. And then, you know, this person already in a place. And sometimes people come at their last resort is church. And I hate to say it that way, but that's just how it is. But then they come in there and they, they like, okay, this person has told me and I feel this way. And then they come back again and you up there saying, well, I'd like to apologize to the congregation I may have a child out of wedlock, or I may be pregnant out of wedlock, and now they're like, oh my God, you know, they feel like they're going back to square one. Help me, y'all, how to, how, how, how should we deal with that? Because a lot of times, people don't just not want to go to church. Sometimes you confuse it. It takes a lot to drag yourself through that door, and you get in there, and you hear this good word, and the next thing you come, or your first time, when you finally get there. And you hear the pastor say, well, I'd like to apologize because I cheated on my significant other or whatever. And I may have I may have this baby in my womb may I may not be my husband. Or I got this alleged woman saying that I got a two year old or she got a baby in her womb, you know. So, I mean, it's hard. And they always say, don't put your wife on. I'm, excuse me. Don't put your mouth on a man of God, but sometimes, you know, you can go to God, but also you need to go to God's house. And I heard that a lot growing up. Like, we, I've been in church since I was, I want to say, four or five. Um, and I left church probably around six. 17 ish something like that 
And it was because witnessing a whole lot of stuff in the church that just wasn't right. I mean, just downright from the pastor on to the back door. It, it was just not right. So I did, I, I admit I did leave the church for some period of time. And then I hopped, when I got back to church, after I had my first son, I wanted to raise him in church like I did. So I hopped around a bit and, um, you know, went to different churches and stuff. And there was one particular church in Omaha that I had visited that everybody had kept telling me to visit. And I'm not going to say the pastor's name or the name of the church. Um, but if you're in Omaha, you probably have an idea who I'm talking about. But I had stopped going to that church and mine only visited a few times. But then when I heard rumors of infidelity and cheating and cheating on his wife and all this kind of stuff, and then the wife moved out, and, you know, it was just a whole big old, it was a hot mess, and a lot of people was leaving the church, it was rumors all around the city, I mean, it, it was a mess, and then I was like, dang, <laughs> it's everywhere, I'm like, it's everywhere, and then it was other pastors in our city who was accused of having babies on their wife, I mean, it's hard to, to, to want to keep coming to church. And like you said, some people come to church as their last resort. Mm -hmm. Like they done done so many wrong things in their life and they feel like they're just, you know, just keep falling down and they need some guidance, some help, a family, a like-minded family, you know, to help them, uh, you get know, just get back, back on track. track. Right. And when, when it's like every church you go to is like, Oh my God, they worse off than me. You know, it's like, how do you keep going to church? And then they say, don't put your mouth on the pastor. They say, um, don't hold your pastor up to such a pedestal or, you know, such a high regard. And you're supposed to be coming to church for God and not the pastor. But how can you say that when That's God is supposedly too. speaking through the pastor and he supposedly is following the will of God? I, I don't know. You know, I'm just asking things that other people say, including myself. A lot of people talk about this stuff and they don't go to church. What Miss Hogg say? That type of pastor can't teach me anything. Yes, we all human, but no thanks. A broken pastor trying to preach to broken people don't make sense. Unacceptable. And you're right about that, Miss Hogg. And I, I totally agree because sometimes, like, you know, I see it as where. Like how my pastor say, and I, I I happen to attend church regularly, but when I do go, I still feel like I never left, and that's honest. That's on my that's truthful for me. But like my pastor say, the church is like a hospital. Mm -hmm. You go in there because you need some help. You need the healing. There it is, and you know, to sometimes if I went to a church. And I was just down on my luck, and I felt bombed out, which I tried not to wait till I get there. But if it did, I went in, and the pastor was like, well, first of all, I want to apologize for cheating on my wife or cheating on my husband or something. I'd be like, oh, Lord. You know, <laughs> I actually would have to ask him. And a lot of things is, you know what, I call on him all day, every day. And I ain't the best, I ain't the worst person. And I do like to look at a pastor, and I feel that, you know, that, that's a calling. I have heard that all my my days. But sometimes, you know what? Every call, like they say, every missed call don't deserve a call back. <laughs> sometimes we got to make sure that that's the right call for Amen. us. <laughs> you know, people say, that's your calling. Your calling could be anything. But sometimes, you know what? If, if, if humans tell you that you call to be a pastor or whatever, you better make sure that you also call God, for, call God first. Call God first. Make sure he, he actually called you that. And make sure you're right. Like, um, you know, some people don't know that uh, Pastor John Gray, um, he used to, you know, belong to uh, a different church in Houston, which was Joel Osteen's church. And then he was offered an opportunity, you know, by Ron Carpenter you know, to run his church that he was leaving. And the name of the church is Relentless. But a lot of people don't know that before all that, John Gray 
he used to belong to Eddie Long's church. And that church was called uh, New Birth, I believe. Ain't that the name of the church? I believe so. New Birth, I believe. Y'all correct me say, if I'm yeah. wrong. That's what I was about to say. Help us, Jesus. Yeah, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Lead us the way. Now, uh, Miss Hogg said, <laughs> she said, that's right, Samantha. I've been a member of a church where pastors mess with young girls. See, and that's the kind of thing that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. when I was younger. It was a lot of things. It was a lot of things. I mean, I... One thing I can Lord say Jesus. about being young and going to church, I wish I had more time at That's church. That's a new birth in Atlanta, yep. Yeah, yeah. I said about being young and going to church, and you see this man as your pastor, and they always, and people say, they call the pastor dad and stuff like that. Okay, I understand that, and I have no problem with that. You can call him dad, you can do whatever you feel. But my whole thing is, if, if a person got tendencies of anything, you know, it ain't got to be sexual. Some people got them about eating, clothing, all kinds of different stuff. But one thing is, a child is like a a blank canvas. And if and if a child come to church, like how we used to when we was kids, my mother didn't go to church with us, but she used to get us ready. And we'd go home Saturday and they said, we're going to church tomorrow. She would stop partying or whatever she was doing with her friend. Get up, help us get our things together. She didn't go to church with us. But she didn't make sure that we, you know, we got our hair pressed that Sunday morning before church. We looked right. They gave us money to go, this for the church, this for y'all to go to the store down the street afterwards. But they turned us over to a, a pastor that you know, that we, we felt comfortable with, and I can honestly say, you know, that, that never happened to me in the church, but, like, some people, they won't come out and say either either East or West, but for you to be vulnerable as a child or an adult and somebody, you know, mess around with you or whatever, especially as a kid, that destroys people, and then they want to say, all kinds of stuff. But people never look at why people say they don't mess with church, they don't mess with this and that. You got to ask that person, you know, what is it? Don't just be like, oh, they just want to continue to live and do wrong. No, something obvious jumped off, just like yeah. like how pastors will. A lot of people do condemn you for not coming to church. Like, oh, I've been there. Um, <laughs> you ever heard the expression... Well, I know you have, because you, you go to church like I do. But um, the expression, you don't have to go to church to have church. And that's what a lot of people use as an excuse not to go to church. And But it's true. You can have church at home. I, I remember growing up and my mom used to uh, attend some people's churches that they had in their basement. Like, and we would be in there shouting the roof off the, off went, the house. You my, know? Marcel went to church like that. My yeah. Son. So it's like Everybody um, who don't go to church just don't go just because they don't want to go. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, usually there's a reason why people don't go to church. Like, I remember one time when I was younger, and I was a, I was a teenager, preteen, somewhere around there. And we used to, uh, no, 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 my bad. That's a different story. Um, I was a young adult. I remember now. I was a young adult, but I didn't have a car, and I used to have to catch the, uh, you know how churches have church van, yeah. yeah, the church van. And I didn't have a car. <laughs> Why would and I my mom didn't have a car either, but we stayed in two separate homes because I was grown. <laughs> and we all used to ride the bus to go to church. And I remember specifically telling my mom <laughs> how I hated getting dropped off first I mean getting dropped off last and I, how I hated getting picked up first because something didn't feel right with the pastor it, it seemed like he would just go over his way being extra nice and extra courteous and asking can he come in my house and do I got coffee did I cook breakfast Did I, I mean it was just you can tell as a woman as a man you can tell when somebody's 
coming on to you? Where's your boyfriend? Why you don't have a boyfriend? Why, why is your old butt asking, asking me all these questions? questions? Why is you always trying to come in my house? And so my mom, she knew my concerns and she would tell him, could you please not drop mm-hmm. my daughter off? last or could you please Mm -hmm. not pick her up first and i swear he kept doing it and doing it over and over and over till i stopped going to church Mm -hmm. i couldn't take it anymore i'm like i know what this man i know what his motives are i'm not dumb i know what his motives are i done seen this stuff growing up in my family around friends i a Hey, I done seen it, and I know the signs, and I stopped going to church. I, I stopped going for a few more years. It was like, I go, then I stop. I go, then I stop. And it's always like somebody of the cloth who stopped me from going. Well, not stopped me from going. I'm not trying to say, you know, they put a gun in my head. You, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't stop going to church just because they don't want to go. And it's sad when you really, really want to go to church, and it's like, you don't know if right or wrong or what you know you you trying to do right but somebody coming at you and you like this person you know you looking at them in your eyes that whatever comes out of their mouth or however they you know being you thinking that it's right but then your i i, I call it your gut instinct you right, is Ms. wrong Hall. He would have tried me. I know he would have. He would have tried me. I could just tell. It's like, you know when people, the way they look at you, the way they talk to you, the way they... (laughs) It made me sick to my stomach just thinking about it. Like, (laughs) No. (laughs) It's like... I, I was grown, so it wouldn't have been like no underage mess going on, but it still wouldn't have been right. He's a married man. Uh, you looking okay. here for guidance to make your life better and your child. Mm-hmm. And for you to be getting on a church van, I know you could just say, okay, church started at 10. And he at my house at 830. Yeah, you're going to get up at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and get you and your child ready because you know this van going to be out here early. You're like, oh, you right. This all dirty old man. Dirty old man, man. There I used to tell my mom, mom, please tell him. And then I'd be like, mom, I'm hearing her talking about the van. Mom, I'm hearing her Mom, he's dropping everybody else. Mom, and she's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I'm telling you, I just stopped going. I was like, See, I can't handle what? it no more. That was said when you, when you were right there, you were right at your blessing. But sometimes, like that, you you like, mm-mm. I might be my blessing. Who don't want their blessing? But also, you don't want that. You know that uneasiness every time. Yeah. That anxiety. I don't want to have to cut nobody. I don't, I don't want, want to, to cut I don't want to cut nobody. Yeah, no sure. No no <laughs> but yeah, you right, dirty old man. And there were red flags, and that's the thing. Like, okay, I'm gonna read y'all something that I that I found online. Let me see. Oh, let me go through my notes. I'm going to read y'all this. This is what I saw online. And y'all tell me if y'all agree with any of this stuff. Okay. Okay, this was something somebody had wrote up about what pastors, what male men pastors um, should watch out for. And it's uh, seven things. Seven things. Um, Number one. And we can discuss each and every one of them if y'all want to. But number one, the first one says, watch out, Mr. Preacher Man, (laughs) for the other woman who wants to be your wife. This is the woman who is unhappily married, and she's your biggest fan, and you are everything she wants in a man. (laughs) What do you think about that one? Okay, first of all, how does she know that he's everything she wants in a man? Because you know what? Probably because he makes his woman really, really happy. But it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the first man. He seems man, perfect. The man with the wife, Avenger? 
Uh, Aven, Aven, how you say her name? Aven, Aventer? Aventer. Aventer. Yeah, Aventer. Her husband. Okay. Just like he said, in front of everybody, they, they, but at home is, you know, if somebody sleeping on the couch, well, she said it's him. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you know that she, you know, she see that she see the happy part of it, but she don't see where they crying at night, exactly. arguing and everything. Okay. Like he was saying on the pulpit, they see this right here. Yeah, but they don't see the tears and uh, arguments and don't come in the room and maybe somebody toss some pillows and blankets and you know the children if they have any I don't know but everybody it, you know yep just they that's might. just in a book by its cover like my mom used to say when when we got ready to go out, you clean your house up you make sure everything clean and everything because you never know who will come at home with right. you I tell myself that all the time that's that that that's how I see this when women and men see something. Follow a person home. My mama always said to follow them home and see if that's what you that's what you really want. Yep, yep. So it ain't always what it looks like. And then number two, it says, Mr. Preacher Man, <laughs> watch out for the other woman who wants to be your mother. This is the woman who smothers you with attention, cooks and buys you stuff. Oh man. I ain't cool. Nothing, ain't but come you know. on, you know, you know. No, no, no. I, I, I like cooking some. I'll take that back. Women, don't let your wife be sick or something. Don't let your wife be sick. And she, oh, I can bring y'all something. What you like to eat, Pastor? What's your favorite? Um, you <laughs> Sometimes, though, when women get in there or men get in there, and they, you know, you know, it ain't what they think. <laughs> She said, feed in the past. <laughs> okay, number three. <laughs> number three. Watch out, Mr. Preacher Man, for the other woman who wants to be your lover. Proverbs 5, 1 through 5, speaks of this woman. This woman is especially dangerous if the relationship between you and your wife have grown stale. She wants you and will make sure you know it. She will convince you no strings attached. What you think about that, Miss Hall? No strings attached. And then I, I, I think, and I'll excuse me, Miss Hall, because I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you speak too. But I think everything comes with strings. Cause you start off doing doing what they want, and as soon as you don't do it. There were them strings coming in there. All right. Tell, tell me what y'all think about that. Mm. So she said it's called the waiting woman. Yep. Yep. Yes, it is. Yep. Number four. Watch out, Mr. Preacher Man, for the other woman you want. This woman seems seems to be everything you want in a woman. In her presence, you feel a cer certain type of way, but you are married. Okay. With that being told, like at a workplace, when a married man is at work or a married woman, and that little my work husband, ooh, work wife, mm -hmm. my work wife, uh, uh, because mm -hmm. ain't none of that. I feel you got one wife and one husband. That's the one that was at the altar with you, right? Okay. Because if you got to have this little play uh, marriage. Y'all going to some, bus together yeah. all the time. Uh -huh. She bringing you That's cookies. A, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lady that I know, and I won't say her name, but she's a sweet lady to me. And just like she said, I don't pop up at my, her husband's a pharmacist. She don't pop up at this job or nothing, nothing like that. But one thing she say is, my husband don't go to work with no hole in his sock, no button missing from his shirt. He don't go to work. Huh? You ought to have me choke on my drink. None of that. 
She said, because you know what? I don't need no woman trying to fix She said, no nothing. hole in his sock. So you know how we keep needle and thread in our purse? Well, some people, I don't know nothing about needle and she said, thread. she said, I can cook uh-uh, and I can bake. I fix it, my man. <laughs> I can cook and I can bake. I can't sew a whole up for. <laughs> she called them play play spouse. <laughs> yeah, that no, um, baby, Miss Hall. That's a that's a H <laughs> now. A double H double H now. Double hockey stick now. No no. To the no no no. <laughs> you know what? And it ain't what just women. Men do it too. Yeah 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 yeah. We can't blame it all on the women. I mean, it seems like it's um, because more pastors are men. That's why it seems like more men do this because more pastors are men. But that don't mean that it's, it's females out there who pastors who has been alleged to be cheated on their husbands too. So, you know, or might not be married and sleeping around with somebody in church. But, you know, that's another story. But we're anyway. not here to target just males. Right. We're not targeting anybody. But what I'm saying is people got to realize that, you know, in any position, at a job, a church, wherever, you know, a lot of people look up and they figure that you're in this position, you got something to always offer. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm, baby. Mm-hmm. You better, do yep. your, you better do your work first. I've seen it at my job, too, Miss Hogg. And you know I work from home now besides a few days a week when I work part-time at the nursing home. <clears throat> but um, I work from home, but when I used to work at the office, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 or whatever my schedule was, I saw it all the time. Women and men bringing each other food to work almost every single day. They going out almost every single day. And then the rumors would start. Uh, you see them? They been gone. What time they clock out? I mean, it's like, <laughs> no, for real. Then once we have the parties and the Christmas parties or the summer picnics, then everybody looking at each other sideways like, oh, they wife here now. Now they act like they don't know each other. You know, so, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but anyway, let me move on to number five. Um, I'm sorry, number six. Okay, watch out, Mr. Preacher Man. For the other woman who doesn't know what she wants, this woman is the mixed up and needy woman. She is she wants always <laughs> she is always coming to your office. She may not be anything to look at, but the danger is you can become emotionally drawn to her. And that's true. I mean Sometimes, sometimes, uh, a pastor might feel like Captain Saver. You know what I'm saying? Yes, go ahead. Sometimes, go ahead. Sometimes, um, the pastor might feel like Captain Saver. And sometimes Mm -hmm. there are women out there who are really, really needy. And they always got a pass kind of pass. Oh, could you call me? Texting them, emailing them, Skyping them. Oh, this happened, that that happened. My my kids acting up. My son just skipping school. My my washer and dryer broke. I, I mean, just just always always contacting the pastor. And sometimes the pastor will feel like really sorry for them. And you can get trapped that way too. And like they said, they don't have to be anything gorgeous. Anything gorgeous, I mean, shoot. There's somebody out there for everybody. Somebody out there for everybody. Even though sometimes it ain't right. Sometimes it ain't right. Um, Let me get to the last one. Emotional connection is dangerous. And that's true. And that's what I was just saying as far as the pastor feeling like... Feeling like... um. Somebody is dependent on them and always need them, and they just have to be there, and they can't tell them no, and then it usually don't work out too well in the end. It really don't. Sam stepped away to make us another drink. Now, number seven. This one is, okay, y'all listening? This is the last one. Number seven. The other woman you work most closely with in ministry, Mr. Preacher Man, uh, beware. <laughs> beware the other woman you work most closely with in ministry. You frequently meet with this woman to discuss ministry um, ministry matters. 
It's the constant meetings alone that shouts danger. Question. Now question. Can restoration occur after a pastor has been caught in a scandal? I mean, true restoration? You know, like we were saying earlier, a lot of pastors or preachers who cheat on their spouses, um, they don't admit it until they've been caught. And then when they caught, they try to do everything possible to remain in that position. Opposite sex pastors, close for uh-huh. Yep, yep. And it's kind of like, that's that's still the same like in the workplace, like what Samantha was saying about the workplace. When you work so closely with someone after hours, coming in early, going to meet up, coffee, um, dinner dates, you know, working over work and stuff like that. Uh-uh-uh. And then y'all know, uh, Oh, what you done done? Oh, Lord. Samantha over here making a mess. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to spill out. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Lord Jesus, we sipping on some wine. Some wine, Miss Ho. <clears throat> you want to see? And no, I'm not advertising. No, I'm not. This ain't no sponsor thing. I'm just showing y'all. Can you see it? But honey, let this me tell you. It's Samantha's birthday. Well, this is her whole, this her whole birthday month. <laughs> and it's supposed to be really stormy and windy and feel like negative 30 degrees here this weekend in Omaha. It's supposed to feel like. Yes, Samantha is making a mess, making our drinks. But y'all. How do y'all feel about what we've been discussing about pastors? Is that something you can easily overlook? If it was your pastor. I mean, I know, um, how that saying go, don't throw uh, rocks at glass houses. Oh, yeah, you know? don't throw stones, don't throw glass stones at glass houses. Um, we all have done something wrong in our life. A lot of us, you know, have skeletons in our closet. Hey, I ain't perfect. I ain't never been perfect. Since about the age of five. <laughs> Since about the age of five. I used to get in trouble all the time. <laughs> I was a I was a good kid, but I was a bad kid. I was good in school, but out in the streets, I was something else. But long my mama was like, long as you go to school, you do your homework, get on that bus on time, you know, she she didn't know what to do with me half the time. But you know what I'm saying. We all have skeletons and Nobody's perfect, but has anybody ever stopped going to church because of that? Because you you don't feel like you can look up to your pastor or you don't feel like they are truly ordained, you know? Yes, we all have said, oh, she said happy birthday, Sam. Thank you. Let's talk. Her daughter's birthday is Jan was January 15th. Oh, week before mine. Yep, yep. <laughs> We gonna try to get out this weekend though. We supposed to be going to see. Oh, did you see our my video like a few days back? Um, now you know we our segment is called Sisters from Another Mister, right? Because we we sister friends, um, and we're supposed to go see. Uh, uh, if Bill Streets could talk, we were supposed to go see it the other day, but Sam had to work, so we're gonna go see it this weekend if weather permits. It, it, it's supposed to be something horrible here. It's supposed to be something horrible here in the Midwest. So if weather permits, we're going to go see if Bill Street could talk. And then we're going to do our sisters from another Mr. Review on that, you know, probably like a week or so, you know, or a few days later. You know? I'm going to do it early because I want, I want to really help Tanya with whatever, you know, with getting her everything together to get to the bench. 
an we entrepreneur. <laughs> we got this. We have lots of plans in mind. We have lots of plans in mind. And I even keep trying to get Sam to get her own channel. I think Sam would be good. Mm -hmm. Sam, y'all just don't know. <laughs> Samantha is hilarious. <laughs> I'll oh, trust me. Oh, hilarious! <laughs> I don't know. You might get a t channel on YouTube. Be like, uh, uh, no, you, you too much. But no. <laughs> saying, I ain't never been in Facebook jail, but I feel like I don't know <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I ain't right. I you know, ain't right. I just don't know what I'll do with it though. <laughs> People all be in Facebook jail. Sammy will be in, in YouTube jail every other week. I, I, but, never, I ain't never really. Once I get on that dog, it, you know, right now, I'm going to stick hanging with you with the time. She said she haven't seen it yet. Yes, Miss Hall, make sure you go see it. We're going to try our best to go see it this weekend. You know, um, <laughs> like I said, the, oh, matter of fact, <laughs> they already, like two hours ago, closed the schools in our area. The kids have no school tomorrow. That's how bad it's supposed to be this weekend. So we got the call probably around, um, it's 1023 here. We probably got the call around 730, like three hours ago, that the, all schools in the area is closed tomorrow. No school. So, you know. But um, thanks, Miss Hall. You said she liked that uh segment. Oh, you're gonna oh, go next you. Friday. Well, what we'll probably do is go. If it's not too bad this weekend, we'll go this weekend. But if not, it will, we'll probably wait till next weekend to do the review. It just depends on the weather. Oh, thank you. It's, thank you. you. Too, thank you so I'm much ready. because. I haven't checked the weather like all around us, but usually when it hits us, it hits Iowa, it hits Kansas, it hits Missouri, you know, the whole Midwest, Chicago, um, you know, we right in the middle. We right in the middle. So the pan, the pan girl, I don't know what they call it. But um my Oh Lord Jesus. I'm stick with you. That's a shame. But so y'all, I hope y'all really enjoyed this segment. Nobody called in tonight. It's okay if y'all just watch. You don't always have to call in. Sometimes we get people who call in, sometimes not. Some people be shy. They be wanting to call in, but don't call in. I, I see y'all. I see y'all. Y'all get over that shyness. I used to be like that, too. And then sometimes I'll be calling people live like, what's up? It's Miss Tanya's prime time, and this is what I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, as far as John Gary, John Gay, John Gray and Aventor, I, I hope I'm saying her name right. I love me some Aventor. I love his wife. Um. His show that's on, well, their show, their show that's on the own channel um, is called, uh, what is it called? The Book of Gray, The Book of John Gray. It's a really good show. Um, he is a really good counselor, a good preacher. Um, I really hope the best for them. We didn't do this show to like try to go in on preachers. We just did this show basically um, to bring to light some of the things that people feel about churches. And some people feel like they want to go to church. They want to go to church. But then it's like when you hear your pastor is doing all this, that, and the third, you're like, well, hell, if he can do it and still stand up there and preach and still get paid and all this and rolling around in expensive vehicles and living in a nice house on the hill, you know, I can do that. I can cheat on my wife and I can do all this. And right. if the pastor can do some people feel that way. And I know I've been in church long enough <clears throat> and on this earth long enough to know that if somebody jumps off a cliff, you don't follow. So I know that. But some people, they do believe that and they don't want to receive a pastor that, especially when they admit it. Now, it's one thing to be alleged. But then when you admit it, and there's so many pastors, I mean, and that ain't the only scandals, is pastors stealing from churches, pastors sleeping with children, um, pastors doing, doing all kind of stuff behind the pulpit. 
And it's it's yeah, like you said, Miss Hall, wrong is wrong. It's like right, and that's what Sam was saying earlier before we even started. You know, you don't want to judge pastors and try to hold them to a higher regard, but then again, aren't we? Aren't we supposed to hold them to a higher regard? I don't they, think so, because they're the ones supposed to be guiding us. And we're supposed to respect them. And, and and what the Bible say, don't put your mouth on the man of God. Right. So uh, and me, I believe that one. But a lot of times nowadays, I always have to ask God to forgive me. Because right. right now, you know, even when my children were little kids, I used to tell them certain little cold words, stuff like that. And they never ever came and told me that. One thing is I always tell my babies is don't worry about it. They say they're going to kill me and then like that. I'm not worried about that because if it's time, it's time. Mm -hmm. But that's another, that that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But people will say and do things to try to quiet you. But when it comes to a child, like I said before, a child is like a blank canvas and people know that. Mm -hmm. Innocent. And when they're innocent and they're vulnerable like that, just the same as once you become a, a senior citizen or whatever, you go back to being innocent and vulnerable. Yeah. All I say is treat people how you want to be treated, but don't don't get up in front of a full house, a congregation or whatever, and come off like you right. Like you're you better than everybody and you hello. That's what see, I think that's what gets me. That's like the church that I went to, um, and I went to several churches when I was growing up, but one of them, I remember specifically, the pastor was always like trying to prophesy and say what people was doing, and you doing this, and now I do this, and you going to hell, and blah, 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 and got fire and brimstone, and all, I mean, just all that, and they was doing so much dirt. It was ridiculous. It was like doing so much dirt. That's what I don't like as far as pastors. Like, I can probably forgive you and get past your indiscretions if you cheat or whatever, something like that. But it's like, it's hard to accept it when the pastor is on the pulpit all the time yelling and screaming fire and brimstone and telling you if you don't get your life right if you don't get saved if you don't put your 10 percent in the church plus your uh offerings plus the building fund plus the i mean i mean maybe you, you, you know what, what i'm confused saying. with that right there <laughs> i mean well, even with like when I had my sons and I was raising them both and I still had the, just my income and I did the 10% and I did the, uh, what they say, free will offering thing. Uh huh. And I always made sure I paid more towards the, uh, the 10% part, the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, but when I, it was never that I didn't have it. I know God always made sure that I did. But one thing I want to say is about giving to the church. It was a pastor that was a, a co- uh, I think it's co pastor. <laughs> that's a bit of the doorknob fund. The, that's what they call it. You know, when they oh. be, people be joking about the building fund. <laughs> the same old doorknob been on that church for like 10 years. <laughs> But I'm, com I'm still confused to this day as a grown woman. I mean, well, uh, an older woman because I was grown when I started taking my babies. But my thing is, okay, like, when you pay your 10%, that's your offering, right? But that's, that's your tithes. Your tithes. Your tithes. Okay, your tithes. Okay, so the offering part is like, is that another 10%? The offering is like, like well, your, your tithe is supposed to be 10%. Um... And some people say it's supposed to be ten percent of your gross, but yeah, um, before they tax I ain't it. gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. When I pay tithes, I go by my net. I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't even gonna lie <laughs> because I feel like this. If it's my gross and my say, let's just throw a random number out there. My check is fifteen hundred, and after my taxes and my insurance and four hundred one and all that go out. 
Um, it might drop down to like what twelve. Eleven hundred, uh, and then nine. I'm like, yeah, like nine, yeah, yeah and then um, you said one month. <laughs> right, and then you gotta pay your tithes off of that. So it's like, okay, now they done already took four, five hundred dollars from me now, and I'm not paying my tithes on that fifteen. Because it's no longer. That's what I, I should mean, pay mine on. I mean, some people do. Some people well, like, okay, you're I supposed to pay told. all your gross. What do y'all believe? Like, do y'all pay tithes? I know some people don't pay. I didn't hear people say, I ain't paying tithes to nobody. I put my offering in, whatever I want to um, donate, and that's it. I was told, give it and give it with a, give it with a good heart. You know right. what I mean? If you don't want, if you don't, if you ain't giving like that, don't give it. She but said, one thing, huh? She said your service is also part of the offering. Yeah. Uh huh. Cause my church, they used to have like where they had a we call it the hot dog. Uh, <laughs> oh, hot the hot dog, dog ministry. ministry! I remember that. I love. I used to love to do that, and <laughs> I can't take that. Now I go out the night before party it down. But one thing is, I had my stuff laid out, and I get up the next morning. She ain't lying. And I get them hot dogs See, we and perfect. cookies. We is not perfect. Shoot, hug up on them kids. We both will be out there. I never tried to minister to them because I didn't hanging out, know, girl. Say it. We both be out there hanging yeah, out. That's but we would go to church on Sunday. True. Like that's one thing that I, I I learned going to church too as a child. Ooh. You can do whatever you want all week long. You can turn up on the weekend, but Sunday morning you better pop some Tylenol, some Advil, drink you some strong coffee, and, uh, and be, have your butt on that pew on Sunday morning. That eight, that's you know. So now this whole thing is off the record. One Sunday I went to church to <laughs> do my hot dog ministry. Come back around. To my house, and these people got this turkey. What? <laughs> it's a fake turkey in their yard. And they always got Christmas and Santa Claus and stuff. I was still faded for the, the night before, but I'm, I I used to go in to oh. church for that. Oh, my God. That's so I funny. came down, I looked, and I said, oh, Lord, <laughs> please help me get home, because I swore that fake turkey was walking. <laughs> But one thing is, I said, I don't care what I do on Saturday, and I'm still looking it up. But I, I, I ain't never told her, I can't even breathe. I chest. can't breathe. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. She said, Samantha finally opening up. Like, yeah, finally, huh? I, I, I was like, Lord, she if that turkey walk, it was a fake turkey. And I said, once, you know, when I got myself together, <sighs> Lord, because that's when I was doing, I was walking. So I walked the same route that I drove from my church. I said, I'll knock on these people's door and say, if y'all get that dog, I'm going to take about this yard. And then they always have like the flag. It's like a flag party. I'm different. I am I in said, tears. Uh-uh, like, I'm done. I'm in tears. You thought the turkey was following you? <laughs> no. Girl, okay. You know, you know, you can run up there. This way. Over there. What's that called? <sighs> Sorsen way. Martin. So like, said, like, like more towards Walgreens. Okay, Marnap. Okay, you go up there and it's like, Ooh. it's like before you get to that school that's up there. Yo, is it that school up there? I can't. Girl, I come around that hill. I'm coming down. I said, Lord, is that that? I thought that truck was fake. I put. <laughs> I promise. I said, I think that truck. You, I think Y'all, that truck walk. I'm about to flatline. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's why I don't want to mess with YouTube, but I love Tiny. Sometimes I do anything in the world. That's why I said that she got her own YouTube Girl, channel. I, look, like, I said, oh, Jay. But I really think you should get your own YouTube channel. Oh, but no, for real, for real. Everybody has a funny story, and there's a lot of people. You have to just be really super naive if you don't think people at your church still kicks it, Shoot. goes out on the weekend. And gets up on Sunday morning, go to church. So, let me ask y'all a question out here. I am like in tears. My whole thing is okay, me. Yes, that's Stella. No, it's Stella Black, Miss uh, Hog. It's Stella Black. <laughs> I get out one time. I'm at the bar, 
And I see two people that I can honestly remember to this day, but it was more than that because I came when I told my son. I saw quite a few people from the church at the bar. Uh -huh. They looked at me like I was a see-through. That What they say? Donald Trump want to build that see-through wall. They looked at me just like that. Like they didn't even see you. Like they ain't know me. So you know what I did? Hey, how you doing? Like, don't be ashamed because yeah, yeah. you at the club. We, we kicking it, club. and I'm going to see you tomorrow in the Shoot, morning. Don't give all that money to the, uh, don't, don't <laughs> the waitress. Say so for church tomorrow. Shoot. I said, break my money down. I said, this for the this church. This for going out. This yeah, for church. <laughs> give me some. See, we got this. See, so now, now, this, this is this. Okay, we in our 40s now. This is not unusual. This is like the life of any young person who's still out there and still mm -hmm. out there, like not all the way in the streets like you used to, but every now and then you go out. I and I'm like, I'm like I when the last time I've been out? Oh, God. We ain't been out a long time. It's been, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't even go out on my birthday. I was over here kicking it uh, with Sam my on my birthday. birthday. <laughs> Shoot, kicking it. But yeah, we don't go out <laughs> anymore. But that was a long, that was back in the day stuff. We used to have a lot of fun. <laughs> we used to have a lot of fun. But anyway, anyway, you said those church folks be at, yes, they do be at the club and they be acting like they I don't see you. Girl, I was like, going to say that too. And I they don't know you. us. Too. I see you. Just make sure you don't wear the same thing you wore here tonight to church in the morning. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, y'all. Is there anything um else you want to bring up about the uh All I say is anybody could cheat regardless of your position or your career in life. And my thing is does everybody wants you think that a relationship could come back after a man after the male has cheated? Do you think it could come back after a female cheat? I think you know I think it's harder. It ain't gonna be the same. In front of when your life is in front of so many people. Like it's just we not like your normal, um husband and wife, he cheat on you, you know. But when you're in a spotlight like that with thousands no of church members and congregation and you're on TV and you're known worldwide, I mean, I really like, I really hope the best for them. I love me some Aventure. I really, really do. She is a sweetheart. Um, she is a sweetheart. And I, and I generally like John Gray as well. So I just hope Maybe this will be a lesson for other pastors out there, you know? Yeah, well, I want to know, though, is there a baby involved? Because if it's a child involved, then I want him to step up and do what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. And I want his wife to be able to express how she truly, really, really feel. Yeah. If not to America, at least to him and to the alleged mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you saw a Vanter, that, that video with uh, John Gray and Aventure when he was making his confession and he had her come on stage and he was like, yeah, there was times when we were both, when somebody was on the couch and she was like, you was on the couch. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure she probably wanted to say a lot more about it, but she was just yeah. like, you know, you was on the couch and, you know, this woman, she ain't going to break up our family. And then, uh, you know, so they didn't really go into details about it as much, but you can best believe no matter what kind of face Aventure puts on, she is truly like embarrassed and hurt, like deeply. Even if y'all do fight for y'all family and y'all still, you know, stay together and everything. I, I it, it just it just has to be hard as heck to recoup I, from something like that. Like everybody knows your man is, and then he you. buys you a two hundred thousand dollar car. Like nope, he's holding something no like holding something in front of you. Like here you go, babe, and you take it, and it's like, Gee, do it feel like it was paid off, or does I mean, is it truly genuinely a gift? 
Like first, okay, first, y'all. Okay, now if y'all been following this story, and Miss Hogg, you let me know if you um been following this story. But at first, remember, he was just bragging. Oh, I bought my wife a car. I can afford it. I sell books. We got a show. Da 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 da. da. I bought her a car because she deserves a car. And da 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 da. And then the next thing you know, he's on stage saying, I have a confession to make. So does it really seem like he bought the car because, oh, she deserves a $200,000 Lamborghini that you can only drive so many miles an hour in the city anyway? She <laughs> or was, was it really uh, like a payoff? Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm sorry, please forgive me. That's for what cheating. it was to me. You know, it's like... Some women will take gifts on top of gifts on top of gifts. And I knew something know. was up too, Aventure. I, I knew it before the even accusations came out. I'm like a $200,000 Lamborghini? I won't want no car. That's there. like the see. top of a I'm line like car that, not saying she doesn't deserve nothing like, like that, but. A two a Lambo? Hey, I, I would have been happy with a Cadillac. I've been happy sh give me an F one fifty. Shoot, I mean All I want is a twenty twenty Dodge Durango. Girl, a Durango, a, a, Durango, a journey, you know, something like that. Me. Shoot, I, I like journeys. I like those. Just some I, some I can pay for the oil change on. Shoot, I can put my cakes in there when I'm delivering my cakes and stuff. Oh, that's that's all I need is a um hmm. have a fleet. A fleet of a fleet of Durangos. <laughs> Work for us. Girl, I already told my nephews and nieces I'm about to push y'all to work. Y'all gonna be delivering cakes, whipping up frosting. I'm like, they like, uh, auntie, you gonna put us in the cake shop? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm like, I'm <laughs> yep. It's gonna time. be a family business. Family business. Sure is. But yeah. <laughs> you said college education for their kids' money. That is, and you know what? It was like so, a big to do. They, they actually, it was, you know, people in the church, and he, he made a video about this. See, we're not just talking about stuff off the top of our head. We're going by what we done heard, what we done seen. And he's been making a lot of videos lately. And one that he did make Guilty. was how people were telling him, how'd you get that car? How'd you afford that car? Because like 50 people were laid off from the church after he took over the church. And he started off with like a million dollars to pay mm -hmm. bills and all that kind of stuff. And after a few months, they have to lay off 50 people. And then a 200,000 car. And then and like, I confess. The car. She probably will. Girl, 200,000. Girl, I, I'm telling you right now, if my man cheat on me, I don't, know. I don't, I don't care I don't if he know. is the president, like that. the president or over a church or over a governor. I don't want no $200,000 car. Shoot. Just fess up. Do better. And that's even if I stay with you. Let's see I mean, because if you can't it. just buy me that any any time of the year, don't buy me nothing expensive like that just because you, you messed, messed up. up. Oh, yeah, Chad. This is more fun. We, we always Hello? just Oh, hey, Miss Hog. Hey, Miss <laughs> I thought somebody had was on the line. Hold on, babe. Hold on. Okay. Let me put you on speakerphone. Okay. I forgot my little speaker at the house, and I'm at uh, Samantha's house. So oh, I'm a, I'm a uh, hope everybody can hear you. <clears throat> y'all in the chat, let me know if y'all can hear Miss Hog. Go ahead, Miss Hog. Okay, I, I just wanted to surprise you all, and mm -hmm. I said, let me surprise you, call them before they close this show out. Aww, <laughs> thank you. We appreciate your thank support. Thank you. I really enjoyed the show. Y'all two are good together. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you get on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> she does. Tell her again. <laughs> Girl, uh -huh. yes, ma'am. Girl, you should have seen her over here making these drinks. Ma making a what, ma'am? <laughs> drink all over the counter. 
Yes, my puppy don't like it. We grown. We all grown. And that's what I like about um me and Samantha together. We know we've been knowing each other for a very long time. Um, oh my gosh, like twenty four years. years. That was your son. My oldest son is twenty he'll be twenty two this year, so, so before that. that. He was two. Yeah. He came in the house and he said, I'm I too. <laughs> I too. <laughs> Go way back. Yes, we go yes. way back. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but thank you for tuning in to us. I love when you tune in to us. I do too. My pleasure. My pleasure. I said, let me catch them before they close it out for the night. But it was a very good segment. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate you, you too. too. <laughs> yes. All right, have a good night. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. All good right. night to you too as well. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, she always did. <coughs> uh, I know ain't even gonna bite. We got Miss Hope. Yes, but thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. We had a lot of fun with y'all tonight. Um, again, this segment was more about what will you accept from your pastor? You know, what will you forgive? You know, is it okay? Should we hold our pastors to a higher regard or should we just treat them like the next door neighbor? Oh, he cheated on his wife. Oh, you know, it's cool. You know, so that's all we wanted to hear was what you guys thought about the subject of, because it's becoming more and more and more where we see it in the media that Mm -hmm. pastors are cheating on their wives. But you know what? In the end, we all have sin and fallen short for the glory of God. Some of us just believe that when you do, you should give up that cloth. You know. See. But y'all let us know how y'all feel in the comment section. Right. How y'all feel? Any last words? No. You good? Yep. Thanks for tuning in, all everybody. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, good night. Thank y'all for tuning in with another review from Sisters from Another Misters. And you guys have a wonderful, blessed night. And in the Mm -hmm. meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, Mm -hmm. stay safe, be blessed. We out. (laughs) Deuces. Put them up, put them up, put them up. Hey, (laughs) we out. Hey, we out. No. (laughs)